Hey everyone, it's Strange Michael. I hope you're doing well today. I have a crease on my sleeve. I gotta fix that. Anyway, I have a review here for a 2019 Korean horror film called 0.0 MHz, or MHZ. So I hadn't heard anything about this film. I don't think I checked out anybody else's review at all about this, ever. I could be wrong, but I don't think I've ever heard anything about this film because of how different the plot sounded. I recently got a Shutter account during October for VHS 99 for Deadstream when I checked that out. And I've talked about a lot of things so far, like Host, that I just reviewed. And I've got to admit, I love Shudder. I've said that over and over again so far. I think it's one of the best apps or TV uh, streaming things or anything like that out there right now. And I'll tell you this. Um, I was looking forward to this, and let me tell you this too. This is kind of a mediocre movie. But it was fun to watch. Does that make sense? Can you have a mediocre movie that can also be kind of entertaining? That's what this film is. Think of the 1980s film from Emilio Estevez called Wisdom. I think it's above average a lot. Like a 4 out of 5 stars average. But it's like, I really enjoy that film. I enjoy just watching it, even though it's a little, a little goofy, the ending's a little weird. You know, I have movies like that in my life that I enjoy. And 0.0, .0 MHz is one that I would recommend to most people who like Korean or just in general Asian horror. It's not really scary. It has some tension in there, it has some good filmmaking in there. But other than that, there's really not much to it. I wouldn't say that the characters are very well defined here. Uh, essentially, there was a, a funeral type of thing, or like a, a banishing demons type of thing back in the day. And it went pretty sour. And a priestess lady died. <laughs> so, there might be some kind of curse out in this particular area, particularly in this one shed where this funeral thing, this celebration slash exorcism thing took place. And this group of kids make their way out there, and then they uh, start having a bad time while they're there. And they're a group of younger Korean folk, like I said, and uh, some of them are friends, some of them are kind of not. One of them, a young woman, who's kind of our main character here. I wouldn't even, I don't even know how far I'd go to call her our protagonist. She kind of is, she kind of isn't, because she's so in and out of consciousness throughout the film. She starts to have kind of a, a weird thing here. We don't really know if she's becoming possessed or if there's something else going on there mentally. We don't really know. But let me tell you this, there's a couple of creepy moments, not really scary per se, but there's a couple of creepy moments in here involving this place that they're going to. And the thing is, most of the film, they don't stay in this location, which was weird to me. Uh, that, that really kind of affected my, my enjoyment of this movie, if you will. It's not really a perfect movie by any point, but it was fun to watch. Like I said, I had my interest on seeing if this particular thing would pan out or come back later on in the movie, if this particular thing would be something worthwhile later on in the film. Sometimes you get that, sometimes you don't. Sometimes things are built up, sometimes they're wasted. You know, there's a lot of wasted passion in this. It's kind of a bummer to say that, but it's true in my opinion. Uh, the characters, like I said, are not really the most well-defined. Some are more sheepish, some are more funny. Out of like the five or four or six kids, whoever amount of people are here. <laughs> I don't really remember. It's been a few weeks since I watched it, but the five or so people that are here in this movie, they are likable most of the time, but they're not really characters. They just kind of do stuff. They're just kind of, you know, one-liners. One-liner providers, I guess. Something like that. The writing's not very strong either. The concept of the 0.0, .0 megahertz title is pretty clever. I like that. What that basically means is when the, I think it's the, I'm just going to call it what I think it is, the brain level, <laughs> the megahertz within the brain, when a human brain, a, a living brain, comes into contact with a dead spirit, supposedly 0.0, .0 megahertz is the number of some mechanical technological logical thing I don't I don't understand I don't care enough to understand uh, supposedly that's the number that would pop up when a ghost is either in possession of a person or in contact with a person while they're asleep or just in anything anything at all right it doesn't make a whole lot of sense is what I'm trying to say uh, it's a little goofy I don't know if this is like a scientifically confirmed thing by you know like ghost hunters ghost adventures from taps, any of those people. I don't know. I don't care enough to know. Like I said, it's goofy. I don't care if you have a goofy ghost movie. I just like the setup on the film. I like that idea as a uh, an execution in the movie. If you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. I like the general way that's played out for the 0.0, .0 megahertz thing. Um, the look of the film is very nice. Very nice. The directing, I can't really preach too much about. Uh, it's about the same as the acting. It's all fine. It's fine. No, there's not really anything special about it. There's not really any CGI in here. It's kind of just, 
you know, typical Asian horror uh, practical effects stuff, like we're talking about girls with black hair on their face type of stuff. If that irritates you, there's not as much of that in this movie, but there is some... Eh, what do you do, you know? The music is good here, though. I do want to say that. The music is pretty solid. It fits the film. It's not amazing or anything, but it fits. It's nice. It's not memorable, but it's nice. And when it comes to 0, 0.0 megahertz, as you can tell, I'm kind of underwhelmed because I really am underwhelmed. There's not really a whole lot to say about this movie because there's not really much to it. It's fine. It's decent. It's watchable. Like I said, it's... It's interesting, it's engaging, most of the time, until I got to, like, the third act. But it's not like, it's not because, like, the third act's bad, it's just... It's so underwhelming for two-thirds of the film that uh, by the time I get to that last half hour or so, I'm just, like, kind of... Whatever, you know? At that point, I realized this wasn't going to be anything special like I thought the opening of the film was going to make it out to be. Because the opening of the film is so tense that I thought we were going somewhere really nice with this, but it does have its nice moments that I really enjoyed. Anyway, 0, 0.0 megahertz. If I had to rate this film on a five-star basis, I'd give it, like, probably a three out of five stars. It's fine. It's a fine film. I enjoy it. I, I kind of recommend it to the right audience. I'm a big fan of Asian horror, um, so it hit me in the, in the right spot. I enjoyed it. You know, I enjoyed it a lot more than I enjoy a lot of American horror nowadays, but it was fine. It was fine. I recommend it if you haven't seen it before. Uh, for people who are bigger into Asian horror. Yes, it is subtitled. You're going to have to read the whole time. I'm sorry. But <laughs> anyway, three out of five stars for me. What do you guys think about 0, 0.0 megahertz if you've seen this movie? Let me know down in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear what you have to say about it. Anyway, thank you for watching, guys. God bless you all, and goodbye.